how do we learn to live with COVID? Hi, I'm Dr. Abe, an associate professor in the School of Nursing at Western, and here on What the Health, I try to make your healthcare questions clearer. So it's definitely been one of the harder weeks of the pandemic. Uh, across the world, we're entering fourth or fifth waves, primarily driven by the Omicron variant. I'm particularly seeing a lot of grief out of places like Canada and Australia. I think in these countries where there has been some half decent efforts at prevention and management, as governments just kind of step back, uh, it's really this kind of whiplash effect on us uh, as we think, you know, we were at the stage where it was like, hey guys, we're all in this together. And now it's like, well, folks, you're kind of on your own. So uh, it's hard to make that switch and, and feel like we maybe aren't even trying that much anymore. And especially, you know, we were looking somewhat disparagingly on places like the US, UK, Brazil, Hungary, who hadn't been managing things well. And suddenly we find ourselves essentially in a similar place. So a lot of the rationale I've been seeing around this big change is that we need to learn to live with the virus. And some wise folks have actually been talking about this for quite some time and this importance of shifting our conversation from crisis to a long-term perspective. And I actually think this is spot on. I do think that we need to learn to live with the virus. And a new year is a good time to do that, to make that shift of perspectives. But what I wanna do in this video is just take a minute to think about what does it mean to learn to live with the virus? And it appears that many are construing this to mean that we stop counting cases, we stop testing, we stop quarantines and isolating, we drop the vaccine passports, we keep schools open no matter what, stop pushing vaccination, etc, etc. And the interpretation is that living with it essentially means we just drop all public health efforts at this point. However, that's not living with it, that's dying with it. So I think the flu actually serves as a really good example of what it means to learn with to live with a virus that's constantly evolving, that's pretty transmissible, that's respiratory in nature, it's vaccine preventable. And I know some people hate comparisons with the flu because that's been used to really downplay the seriousness of COVID. And, and that's not what I'm trying to do here. I just think it serves as a good example of what long-term virus management looks like. So how do we live with influenza? Well, we have a global surveillance system and a vaccine development system. We track and report cases at the local, provincial, national, international level. We require long-term care homes to report resident immunizations and to do them. We have vaccination requirements for health professionals and health professional students. We have protocols around antiviral use. We're developing new antivirals. In fact, we spend hundreds of millions of dollars on flu prevention and management. And I think this will be no different than how we learn to live with COVID. It's another high impact communicable disease and it's gonna require permanent management. There are so many reasons why we don't just let it rip, why we don't let influenza just rip through the community, why we don't let chlamydia just rip in the community. For COVID, of course, the loss of life is the top reason we don't do that, along with disability. But then the economic burden of illness is the second. We actually know from the flu that money we spend preventing influenza saves us tons of money downstream by keeping people ha healthy. Um, you know, whether that's to keep them employed, keep them uh, able to care for children, uh, keep them um, you know, out of hospitals. So there is sound rationale, actually, that prevention is the way you address all communicable diseases. And I think that's how we need to go forward with this. Another reason with COVID and the rapid um, evolution is that by letting it rip through the community is how you produce the next variant that's going to be that much more difficult to manage and more likely to evade our future immune protection. So living with COVID should include really obvious things like testing and reporting. That's a bare minimum for all communicable diseases from chlamydia to the flu. 
And that we're stopping this right now is being justified by a system that's overrun. So learning to live with it means having a system that has a search capacity so we're able to test, trace, report as cases come up. And learning to live with it also means a good system of continual ongoing vaccination, just like the flu shot. So as we learn about the frequency of doses, I think we're going to need some pretty clear guidance to people because more and more everyone's going to end up on like a slightly different cycle of their timing of their vaccinations. So it'll probably be something along the lines of, you know, after X months since your last booster, that would probably be the easiest way. And then maybe adjust that by age because we know older adults need them more frequently. Anyway, it doesn't matter the details, but we will need some ongoing easy availability of vaccines and, and clear directions of when to get them. And so then from there, you know, I have some other reflections on things we might do to help us live with COVID, particularly until we get effective global vaccination that is hopefully going to slow down just the circulating virus and the pace of production of, of new variants of concern. So this could be something like a community wide masking recommendation system. So when a community hits X number of cases per 100,000 people, everyone's recommended to wear a mask indoors so like a, a fire warning system if you've ever gone camping and you see you know there's, there's yellow orange red uh, that you know this is where the community's at and then these are like the masking recommendations that go along with that uh, that you know would come and go as as they're implicated um, i also think that covid vaccines should be added to the immunization requirements for children in school this might subsequently be removed if global management is uh, well achieved, but for now, um, I do think it's it's very much warranted. Um, and then finally, we might want to do something like consider a longer winter break. So having five weeks, for example, from mid-December to late January is going to blunt the seasonal wave. Again, you know, I'm just really spitballing here because, you know, obviously there's going to be a lot of thinking about how that something like that would work but really just to say that everything should be on the table as we think about well what's the best way to live with this thing so all that to say in conclusion that yes i i do think it is time we learn to live with covid but no that does not mean we just drop all measures it means we take the collective public health knowledge on prevention of communicable diseases and we add COVID into the mix.